G'day. Here we are in front of the 10-year uh, anniversary 2017 model Jackson Ford Fold. Alicia here with me from Sydney Branch. Um, we're going to show you exactly how easy this thing is to set up. Bat rack first. Okay. Love those little um, self-locking spring clips on them. Yeah, a lot of great. people do those. It's such mm -hmm. a nice thing to do. So nice and easy. There we go. Do you want to hang on to that for a moment? Yep, go for it. Let it go. Yep. So there's pins there you can put in. You don't have to put them in if you don't want to. Nice and simple. Okay. Just be mindful when you're cranking these right up too, that they will actually move the camper, so. Mm -hmm. And do you use these for stabilising the camper or is it more for levelling? Um, a bit of both. Mm -hmm. You can use them for both because they are a load rated leg as well, so. Mm -hmm. Just so it seats in firm like that. I'm generally trying to the camper like mm -hmm. eye level. And and we've got four there. of those around the camper. Four of them around the camper. Yep. So dropping them down. Let's get her open up. This is the easy part. Mm -hmm. This is why I love forward folds. This part is so easy. Yeah, very. So easy. I'll pop in first, I oh. guess, and then go from there. Always fine with these tents. If you push the middle one up just a little bit first, not too mm -hmm. high, because it makes it um, a bit hard to get the tent, the um, bows in. And obviously making sure you're not over tightening it as well. Correct, yep. We can adjust that later on. Push that front one out. Mm -hmm. Really, that's as, that's as easy as it gets. That's your one night setup pretty much done. Yep. This is your annex roof that goes on. Is there anything that can make it easier for you? Not really. Mm -hmm. It's so they're, they're not a hard concept. thing to put on, they're pretty straightforward. Yep. Especially now if you notice rather than having the big peak up in there, they're quite flat. Mm -hmm. That's what one of the biggest the biggest um, issues were with people is is having the big peak in the middle. Okay. I mean, yeah, sometimes you need a little step stool or something to stand on to give you a bit of height. Everyone mm -hmm. carries a little stool or something like that. You've got but, the stairs uh, there though, so that's quite good I guess. Make sure you little. So why have we got the Velcro and the, and the uh, zipper on there? Just helps um, seal the roof up as well. Mm -hmm. Also for rain, like stops any leakage come through, mm -hmm. and just um, yeah, just helps you um, annex to hold on a little bit better. All right, here we have all of our poles that you'll find in the Jackson Ford folds. Mm -hmm. We've also um, got that pole diagram there, so obviously that relates to every pole that's yep. laid out here. Yep, every mm -hmm. pole's numbered as well. You'll find a sticker and a number on every pole. So it'll pertain to the diagram there as well. Mm -hmm. um, there's not that many poles in it actually because it is a very simple setup as well. So yeah. starting from your standard spear poles, you've obviously got the one longer one which is in the middle peak of your roof. Mm -hmm. All your standard number twos there. Um, all of the window flap awnings you'll find on here, like, as you know, got the eyelets in them so you can yeah. actually pull them out. And that's what these ones are here for in the middle. Mm -hmm. Go for um, bad weather as well. Yep, correct. Mm -hmm. You've got your flat eye to eye spreaders for across the front of your um, annex roof. Mm -hmm. Your four little cedar foots, they just go in each corner of the tent inside. Again, you can put them in if you want. Doesn't really have to go in, it's not. Just adds a bit of structure. Yeah, a bit of yep. structure, it's not critical. Mm -hmm. Two cedar foots, again, for your number one spreaders that run out from your um, annex roof. Mm -hmm. Bit of extra structure on there. These are your three main bad boys. These ones here will hook into the three bows from inside and provide the structure that runs out as well across your um, annex roof. So if you're doing your annex, that's probably going to be the first three that you grab out, I'm yep, guessing? these will be the yep. first three, three that you'll find in mm -hmm. your pole kit because they're the first three that you're going to need. Um, two smaller cedar three spreaders and you've got 
the larger ones there. There's no particular rhyme or reason or place for them. Again, it's for structure. Mm -hmm. If you're going to get bad weather and you want an extra peak in the middle of your roof to help mm -hmm. the water run off, it's a great idea for the spreaders. So another really good idea that I think a lot of people do do with obviously poles like this is um, coloured electrotrape. It's excellent. You can pop you know, your red for your, your upright poles or your green for your roof poles and it just identifies those poles really quick for you, nice and easy when you're setting up as yeah, well. Great idea. Yeah, Fantastic definitely. Idea. So on each of your main poles you've got uh, I guess what we call a sock. Um, now when you first set up your camper that's going to actually be inside the tent so you do need to actually push those out and that's going to then allow for you to obviously be able to put those poles through, tighten it up and that's going to help with your water, rain, those sort of things, keeping everything in, in, uh, in check. Alright, so hook pole, obviously it goes into the uh, main structure poles of the tent. Go on, Bill. Yep. In there. So you've got a little hole in the actual main structure area and the hook just basically goes straight into that and that will give you a really good structure with your uh, annex. Uh, three poles obviously on the main structure of the tent, so these hooks just go straight into the main structure poles. I'm just going to pop that in. All right, what I always like to do with these is just lay your, your pole work out in the basic frame. Yep. So your, your two number eights, mm -hmm. I always like to lay them sort of just in a in a shot like that, mm -hmm. your two flat spreaders, mm -hmm. which run into the peak of your gable. Now I've got number 10, which is your centre pole. Yep, which is your big tall centre pole. Mm -hmm. And then your last one over there. Perfect, so we're all mapped out. Yep. That way from here, so we grab a number 10. Mm -hmm. Being the middle peak, found it always easier to do that first. Mm -hmm. So you grab your spreader bar. Okay, so that's just the hook pole we put in earlier. Yep. Near my toes. <laughs> All right. At this point here as well, find the eye. So there's the eye. But also at this point here, and you'll notice on these spreaders too, you got one flat end and you got one that's slightly curved. That curved end sits up on your peak like that because you've got camber on your peak. It allows it to curve as well. So you've got two of those, and you put them in now. Just let them hang there. Mm -hmm. that Put your all over. Okay, so this pole we've got to go up a little bit so you yep. can find that hole. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah I'm not on all MDC tents, one thing you'll find which is really handy, they've all got this little this little bungee cord and this little hook. What they're for is when you're setting up like this as well, all the poles have got a hole in them. So you can hook them through there like that. So while you're setting up, you don't have to worry about your annex roof flying off into the breeze. Okay, so which way would you like to go, Bill? From there we can go either way, it doesn't really matter. Mm-hmm. So grab your spreader par. Okay, so you put that back in the hole at the other one? Yep. Tighten up your... And push that one out. Always tighten up your bar here. And that's going to give it a bit of stability as well, obviously yep. if you've got a bit of wind or whatnot yep. too. Tighten up that one. Mm-hmm. Just pop that canvas over for you. Nice and tall, so <laughs> it always makes it easier if you're a bit a taller. Lot easier. Okay, and same with this one. Yep, your last spreader. Mm-hmm. And you've got a bit up. of shade, you can have that first beer and enjoy yourself. <laughs> Um, what we do after we've set up the annex, because with your annex poles you hook them into the corners of your bows, 
if you tighten them up to begin with and make it very tight, it makes it difficult to get those um, hooks into those poles. So we'll leave the um, main tent structure a little bit slack for when we're setting up. Once the annex is done, then you can go ahead and finish tightening everything up. And I always like to start with this middle one here, so just lift it up so it's nice and tight. Both sides are. And don't go reefing a brand new tent either, because you've got to allow for it to season, you've got to allow for it to stretch, it's going to do its thing. So just firm, but not too firm. In your kit you'll find two number six poles, C-clip one end, foot on the other. What they're designed to do is taut the end wall up of your tent. So very straightforward, clip it onto your frame, drop it down the bottom, and done. So just makes that wall sit nice and firm. Okay, so obviously little things on the trailer. So this one here, you've got a bit of Velcro. That actually goes around the gas strut there so that obviously everything's nice and tight. And then you've also got some press studs along here. So just make sure that they are all in line. Popping those ones on. Goes around again, that gas strut. And then obviously do the same on the other side as well. Now. There's two options with this. You can either put these down obviously with your press studs and keep this as is, or you can actually roll this one up so you can open this up into one big room as well. Excellent space, isn't it? It's a beautiful space. Mm -hmm. I mean, with a day bed there, you can stretch out, have a sneak, mm -hmm. somewhere yeah. for the kids to sleep at night. You've got your annex up on here as well, so yep. obviously nice bit of shade, yep. a little bit of breeze coming through the windows open. Yep. And it hasn't taken long at all to get it to somewhere where you can actually live in it. I don't know about you, Leash, but um, this is one of my favourite features about oh, these definitely. tents here. Yeah, definitely. Is um, a little triangular flap on here. Mm -hmm. A lot of people don't realise what it is because you can zip that right out of the way and undo it, and then you can roll it up like a normal window flap. But one of the massive benefits of these things here, especially to keep the sun, the wind and the rain out, mm -hmm. zip it down about halfway, leave your zip off a little bit. These poles here you will find in your pole kit. So number 14 so, is that one there? It's number 14. You put the spear up on the top here. Under the bottom there you'll find another little loop. Just drop your hook in there. You'll see Alicia's doing the same thing. And then once they're in there, zip it down shut. And then you've got your C2C spreader there. So you undo your C2C spreader. Just clip it up there. Slide them up to the top, spread it out. And you're done. Just push that up to the top. Yep. Perfect. Heaps of airflow. Yeah. Yep. Keeps, keeps the sun out from all directions. It keeps the rain out. And again, as I said before, internal window flaps uh, starts getting cool during the night zip everything up from inside, they're absolutely brilliant. Just gives you so much structure and shade in, in and around your, in your camper trailer. Now guys, you don't even have to tie these down, they're pretty sturdy. Yep. But if you wanted to, if you had high winds or something like that, well then obviously you can. You've got your drawbar there, so you can go straight to your drawbar, drawbar if you wanted to. Um, but to be honest, you really they're going to sit pretty nicely just like that. Folks, when adjusting up your camper, take a good look around and, and just notice stuff. You'll notice these little um, thumb screws here. Everyone that's got one of those means that it's fully adjustable. So stand on the outside, have a look at your camper. If it's not quite sitting right, you've got a pull mark through somewhere, just back one of these off or adjust it up and push it out a little. Just, just play with your, your pole work. If, if you watch your canvas and watch, see what it does when you extend these out, you'll, you'll soon see whether you need to increase or decrease the amount of tension that's on there. But just remember, every single one of those is adjustable when you see one of those on your pole. With your 12 volt system inside, your batteries, you will find hiding underneath the chair there. So in the Jackson forward fold, it comes with dual 100 amp hour AGM batteries in there. So that's why you'll find them. Circuit breakers up on the back wall just there as well. Auto reset, so just push the button, they'll reset. On your other side here, you've got your battery charger there. So that's a 240 volt battery charger. So if you're at home or a power outside or a caravan park, just plug it into the wall and that'll happily charge your batteries. 
if you've optioned in the 1000 watt inverter into your, into your camper trailer, you'll find it right there. It lives right next door to the battery charger. So very simple, it's just a flick on switch and it'll do everything it needs to do. So on your electrical panel, um, basically this is your on off switch um, or your isolation switch. Once you pop that on, you'll see on here that you've got your volts, so that's obviously where your batteries are sitting. So try not to let them go below 12 if you can. This one here is going to tell you how many amps you're actually pulling as well. Along here, you've got everything's labelled, so if you want to turn your water pump on, you're literally just turning it on. Refrigerator is obviously the 12 volt socket that your fridge is actually sitting in that fridge slide area, so turn that on. If you're travelling, make sure that you do have this one on if you've got food in the fridge, obviously. Lights is obviously everything on the inside, so all of these sockets on the inside, so if you do have your LED strip lights up, make sure that's on. And DC being all of your outside ports, just like these ones as well. Your spare is actually your battery charger, so making sure that that's on and your battery charger inside is also on if you have the, the 15 amp plug on the outside of your trailer. This one here is obviously, see how much water you've got in the tank. This guy's actually showing up red, so we have no water in the tank. If you do, it's going to come up green and tell you how much you actually got. Also, if you do need to know for any reason, underneath here, you've actually got your 12 volt pump. So that's obviously going to be connected through to your kitchen, um, drawing water, all those sort of things. You do need to have the water pump actually turned on, um, but if you do need to service it for any reason, it's easy to be able to get into there. I don't know about you, Lise, but um, when I'm out on the um, track with the kids and the um, good wife, um, <laughs> I don't like to um, eat um, too poorly. Uh, we, we always cook lavish meals. No, definitely. And um, these things here have got one of the best kitchens I've ever seen in a camper trailer. All locked behind a nice door there. Full stainless steel they are. Nice big sliders. And out they come. Really important too with this one that when you're putting it back away, obviously lock it in and obviously pull it up if you're yep. pulling it out. Yep. They've got a support leg there, if you want to grab it, just up on the bed there. Mm -hmm. So another one of the great features, you can always never have enough bench space out on your um, out on your camper trailer. So um, these ones here, that's your little support leg going in. Again now, you can lean on it, it's, it's good. But um, preparation space is, is always a must when it comes in camper trailer kitchens. I mean, I love this thing for that reason. The glass top lid on there turns it all back into bench space when you're not using it. But also, Smev 3 burner. Now Smev's an Italian stove, the best quality you'll get in an off-road kitchen. Um, the great thing about these two, I know some people put household kitchens and things like that in them and what happens is they vibrate around on the tracks, these don't, these are, these are solid, they're fixed in. You can still remove them to, for cleaning, for easy cleaning, but what you will find is they will sit in there, any dirt track you want to take that down, your kitchen's always ready in an instant. Now plenty of storage there, full cutlery tray. Drawers, all sorts of stuff. What's in that end, end um, cover there, Alicia? So in here you've got your hose, so obviously from your sink. So a great little idea is to get, say, for example, a, um, a five litre bucket. That can pop underneath, um, and then obviously all of your waste from the sink is going to go straight into that bucket. Um, you've also got your gas connection. So it is a quick connect, so we'll show you how you do that. And you've also got your water connection as well. So all those hoses, there's all a, um, underneath in here, you've actually got a little hole that everything goes through and neatly goes out to the other side so you can quick connect it all in. Folks, this is uh, hooking your kitchen up. It's very, very straightforward. They're both different fittings, so you really can't get them wrong. And they're both quick connect. So that's your water. So plugging your water in, straight in, done. And with your gas fitting, it's a bayonet fitting too, so it's like a cam lock. So take your dust cover off. Slide your little piece in, wait till it seats, push in, push in and turn. So here guys you've obviously got your little mixer tap, so obviously turning this on and off when obviously your water pump is on. Just a little reminder though when you are packing it up, just make sure that you do actually put that down enough that it will actually clear this area here. Um, you've got your little plug and everything in here too, so try and keep it in there so you don't lose it. That's just a nice little hint and tip guys. This is your draft skirt. So draft skirt velcros right across the side of your camper there. Again, draft stops all the draft from coming in underneath. We'll show you how it goes on. It's nice and easy. So pick them up, start at either end. It really doesn't matter which end you start from. Very straightforward. Just run along with your velcro. Just, just make sure everything's nice and tight. Just make sure it's all nice and even, nice and neat. Along you come. When you come to here, you'll find the zip section. That zip section there, you say, number one, you can run around there. 
so it will actually Velcro in right around there. And the other thing as well, because you've got storage all behind here, you've got a fridge slide, you've got your pantry. Zip both of those sections down. Gain access through to your fridge box and your pantry when you're not using it. Simply do your zippers up. Velcro back on. Seal your area up. At the bottom of your draft skirt, folks, what you've got, you'll find these little D-rings here along the way. What they're for is so you can peg it down. Peg it down nice and tight to hold it down. You'll notice here you get the Velcro strip along there. That's for your bucket floor, your PVC bucket floor that comes in there, which we'll show you how to install very shortly. Here we have your annex walls. This is your full annex wall system. Yes, it's a big bit of canvas, looks a bit daunting, but let me assure you there is nothing easier to set up than these here. One of the things you're going to find with your annex walls, guys, is they actually split into three pieces. So here you'll find a zipper. So that zipper there will sit in the corner post here of your annex. So you don't have to put all three walls up, all full set of walls up. You can put one up at a time, put two up, or put all three up, whichever you want. When you're opening up your walls, what you're going to find too is your shower tent will be already attached to the back of your walls. So your shower tent's there already. I always like to sit that zip right on the corner post so you get an indication of pretty much where it's going to sit straight away. All the walls are Velcro on. So with your Velcro, you've got a Velcro attachment here. So you've got one Velcro attachment there and Velcro that runs across the top there. So I always like to get the Velcro on here first. That will give you an indication of where you're going to sit across the top there. So as you come up, Velcro on the top there just to hold it and then just start there for a little bit first then come back to here because this is another piece here that you want to seal up nicely so just grab them along seal it up and again down to your draft skirt so your draft skirt will seal right the way down as well and then as you come along if you've got the wife with you or one of the kids it's always handy just to get a bit of a hand but again nothing could be easier than just running them across there Again, make sure that is nice and smooth. Don't let it bunch up too much because as you go along this whole piece of canvas, if you bunch up an inch here, an inch there, an inch there, by the time you get to the other side, you're going to find you're six inches short and you're going to be thinking the walls don't fit. Guys, if you find yourself at a campground and you find yourself winding up your window flaps by yourself, let me show you a really handy little tip. So rather than struggling with canvas and things like that, bring your flap out here close to you, fold the corner in, fold a corner in. That way you're starting from a little piece of canvas like this. Roll them up carefully and just work your, work your way out. Before you know it, you've got it all sorted. Straighten your ears out. As you come up here, you'll find that little pocket there. You got your little ties there. Hook them in, both sides. And tuck them in underneath here like that. The idea of that is, you get a bit of rain during the day or during the night, rather than that filling up full of water and spilling all over you when you undo them, tuck them underneath your little flap there. They're out of the way, they stay dry. Nice handy little tip. Folks, this is the kit here that you're going to need to set your shower tent up. So very straightforward. You've got two number 17 spear poles, you've got a number 18 spreader, you'll find them in a bag like that. You've got your flat sheet PVC floor that you just peg down there, it'll be in a bag like that. You've got two ropes, two pegs, easy done. Let's show you how it goes up. So grab a spear pole each. You'll find in the top of your tent there, you'll find the little tabs there with the eyelets on them. Just run it through the spear, under your leg. Just let, your, let the leg hang down, hang down a little bit. And to get some tension on top of there, just drop one end on top. And 
and the other end on here. Spread them out. So pull your shower tent out. You'll find the little Velcro tabs on there, so they just give you a bit more purchase on your tent. So drop them around. I sort of drop a couple on to begin with just to get it to hold up. So just to get it there, you can make it look all pretty later on. So grab yourself a rope. Put on your spear pole there. No need to go reefing them, reefing them too hard. Alicia's going to put the other rope on there. There you go, folks. There's your shower tent. All done and dusted. Like, literally took two, three minutes in the leash. No time at all. Yeah. Very, very quick to do. Very easy. Shower till your heart's content. Here we've got the PVC floor for our annex area. This is one of the best bits of equipment you'll ever have. Because, as you know, when you go camping, it will rain, and it's going to rain, and quite often it'll turn this area here into absolute muddy slop. At least with the PVC floor in here, everyone's going to say clean, safe, and dry. You can really turn it into another room. As soon as you put this PVC floor in, it really does complete this into another room. They're easy to put up, same as the annex walls, just run the Velcro along the sides there. Very straightforward you'll have it done in no time. Folks, when you're putting the um, PVC floor in, one of the most important things to remember is in each, each PVC floor, you'll find a corner, a sewn corner in it. Make sure that lines up with the corner of your annex walls. That way your floor is gonna sit nice and level. You're not gonna have lumps in it everywhere. G'day folks, here we are. Your Jackson's all set up. Nice and easy, nothing hard about it. Everything's been straightforward. We hope we can um, help you um, set yours up just as easy. It literally took us like around the 40 minute mark. Nothing hard about it, was it, Leash? No, we've done everything. We've, we've literally put the floor in, we've put the windows in, we've done everything. Yep. So yep. this is your complete setup within that 40 minutes. Yep. Yep. So. One of the biggest tips I can give you folks on your first time setting up, don't try and smash it out in 40 minutes because it's not gonna happen. Take your time. Take your time to lay all your poles out. Read your pole diagram. Take it nice and slowly. If it takes you two, three times as long the first time, once you get used to where the poles go, how the canvas goes up, like Alicia and I have set these up many, many times in the past and, and both of us are experts at it now. So give yourself time to get used to setting it up, work out where all your poles are going, how your canvas goes up. Listen to some of the little tips that we taught you about about putting the camp up, and it'll make yourself a lot a lot easier, won't it, Leisha? Oh yeah, definitely. And um, as, as Bill said, basically just give yourself the time, you know, have some fun with it as well, and really enjoy yourself here. Uh, you've obviously got the camp because you want to go out and enjoy, go out and enjoy. But uh, yeah, just take your time and learn all about it and see the country. Yep.